Hello. There we go. Midwest Elevation, are you out there? It is Tuesday and we are back with another conversation to raise the collective consciousness. I am so excited to be back here again with my dear colleague, Reverend, Reverend Jen. I spilled over that. Cormier, right? Is that how? Yes, yes. It is. I wanted Thanks to make sure I got me. that right. Yes. Yeah. So um, Midwest Elevation, let us know if you are out there who's listening, who's watching today or in the replay. We're so happy to have you. Every conversation we have on Tuesday is for us to do sometimes the hard work, sometimes the easy work, but it's the inner work to see the outer change. Uh, and we are especially excited to be having this conversation with you because sometimes the work is really hard, <laughs> but there are ways in which we can do the hard work. As you say, Rev. Jen, with grace, with beauty, with honor. Um, and I'm really excited to, to get into that with you today, but let me introduce you to all of you <laughs> out there in Hi, Facebook everyone. land. <laughs> Today's guest, Rev. Jen Cormier, is a grief guide who brings 20 years of experience in the healing arts to clients who are moving through life transitions and grief. Jen is committed to the evolution of how we relate to death and walk with our grief. She is the creator of the Transform Your Grief Immersion Program, a unique holistic group program that addresses the cognitive, emotional, and physical layers of each individual. Quote, when we shift our perspective to include our body in our grieving process and see grief as a creative collaborator in our lives, we open the door to healing and peace. Mm. Welcome, Jen. I am so glad mm. that you are here. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah. yeah. It's a real honor to be in your group of folks who are really doing the inner the inner looking to make the outer shifts in their lives. Um, it's really, really powerful work that you're doing. So thank you. I love you and thank you for having me here. Thank you. Awesome. And Sal's here. Hi, Sal. Thanks for joining us today. Well, let's just say, you know, this is a tender subject for a lot of people, right? Mm -hmm. um, and even uh, until very recently, I would say people would would even be afraid to say the word death. Yeah. Right. You know, we would whisper it. Yes. Um, but I think that the work that you're doing is in a way allowing the space for that grief to be. So, I, I, you know, just just tell us where you're at. Tell us what's what's happening, how you how you work with this grief uh, in a way that really helps your clients. Yeah. Yeah. I just, <clears throat> I love that you brought it up right from the forefront, like that we've just got a fear around even saying the word death. You know, I took a, a conscious dying green burial home funeral course and they had a list, a paper, a list of all the ways that we say that somebody's died without having to say death. Mm. You know, it's like they kicked the bucket. They, you know, it's like all of the different things we say that so we don't have to say they died. Right. Yeah, so they were just encouraging us, like really, like when someone dies, say the word die and died because mm -hmm. our culture is so averse to death. And um, it just brings up when I turned, I think when I turned 30, I had this revelation at some point, like, oh my God, like how have I lived 30 years of a life and I've never seen anyone born and I've never seen anyone die. Oh, interesting. Right? Yeah. Like wait a minute. I mean, it was like one of those moments where I was like, wait a minute, how am I 30? You know, when people have those, like I turned 50 or I turned like those milestone decade right. moments where you have a revelation. But that was my revelation at 30 was like, how have I not, like how many people billions, you know, like, how many people yeah, are every born day. <laughs> every day and how many people die every day? And I've never seen one like that is weird to yeah. be a human and not to experience birth or death ever. So I just was like a revelation. My mind is blown up right now. <laughs> Isn't it? Yeah. Right? So like what the industrial complex 
structure of our society, of our Western society, which, you know, we can talk about schools and this and the prison industrial complex and the school, this, you know, all the systems. But one of the things that we've done is we've made birth and death, we've turned it into industry. Mm. You know, it used to be you were born at home and you died at home. Like, where else would you, where else would you be born and die? Like, it's a, we're human, like, you do it in your den, you know, you're an animal, you may have a nest, like, where else would you go? Like, you would go to your nest to right. lay your egg, right? <laughs> like, what's like... Anyway, so, um, so it's just become like, there's a huge funeral industry, mm. right? There's a huge um, pharmacy industry, there's a hospital healthcare industry, like it is industrialized, wow. our birth and our death. Yeah. And because of that, we've made it so we hide birth and death from everybody. So unless you are given, and even if you're giving birth, often like we're going to knock you out and we're going right. to throw a sheet over it. You know, you won't you don't even see your own child be born. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> right, right. It's you know, and, and people have loved ones that die. It's like, I mean, Elizabeth Kubler Ross did amazing work so that people weren't, I mean, literally before her work in this country, like people were dying alone, mm. naked under fluorescent lights with nobody there. Like that's mm. how industrialized death was. Right. You died in a hospital, fluorescent lights, nobody holding your hand. Like that's what it had come to. So um, I didn't know this is where this conversation was gonna start clearly, but <laughs> thanks for bringing up that like, we don't wanna say the word death because um, it's, it, it really brings up a passion in me because of that revelation that I had. Um, and, and so, so after I had that revelation, I found myself doing a, a birth doula training because I really, I had a friend who gave birth. She had a home birth of her daughter. This is when I lived in Oregon. I lived in Ashland, Oregon for a couple of years. And one of my closest friends who brought me out there, she had a daughter and I really, re we were very close and I really, really, really wanted to be there at her birth. But it's not something that like, it's not yeah. like, like, Hey, hey you want to go, Hey, we're, you know, we're going to go on a hike on Wednesday. So can I be at your birth on Sunday? Right. You know, like you don't really like invite yourself to somebody's birth. Right. right. So, um, and of course you, you can't do that in a hospital, like let one person in, but at a home birth, right. You could invite your acupuncturist and your friend and a doula and your mom and whoever you want. Um, so she and I actually talked about it and, and, um, um, it's a dance, right? Because if you don't want your mother there, it's kind of hard to tell your mother, like, well, I've invited my friend to be there, but you can't be there. You know what I mean? Like, so right. it's like, there is like a little politics around it, but I, I just had this call, like I wanted to experience a birth of a baby, period. And then of course she was a very good friend of mine and I felt really like, really moved, like I really wanted to be there. Um, so I was not at her birth. Um, and, and then that led me to a doula training. I did an, a Dona International birth doula training because I wanted to help. And that basically, if you don't know what a doula is, it's, um, it's, a, it's a, someone who is the support person to the mother, to a birthing mother. And you're a support person to the birth, birthing mother because oftentimes, you know, there's a power dynamic. If you end up in a hospital, you know, there's the doctors and the nurses and then there's you and you're going through this huge experience right and it's hard to advocate for your own needs when you are in the birthing process right so to have a uh, it's basically just a point person to advocate for what you need and want mm -hmm. on your behalf and because you're not the family member you're not the partner you have a little more clout in the hospital to say right. hey um how about is it possible for us to wait on that for another hour or hey you know can she X, Y, or Z. So mm -hmm. um, advocate for eating and drinking, advocate for moving around, advocate for not being hooked up to something. If, you know what I mean? So, yes. so I did that and, and, um, and I ended up being a doula for a couple of women and I wasn't able to actually see either of their births <laughs> for whatever yeah. reason. So I didn't experience a birth until my own son was born. That was my first birth experience. And, and he was born six and a half years ago. So that was my first birth I experienced was my kid being born into the world, um, which was a whole, that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother show. We got another show on, on birth, but, um, uh, and I'm coming around to answering your question, Renee. I really am. 
<laughs> this is all going like where, wherever this is going so, i'm enjoying it so um and I, and I never experienced, so I experienced death, like, you know, my hamster died as a kid. Like I remember my first, I remember my fish died when I was little, like three. And I drew a picture of like, uh, it, his name was, I think, um, I think it was Floyd the fish. I love it. I think, but he was like a, a little orange goldfish. Mm -hmm. And my mom was actually doing a master's degree in death and dying. She, she oh, wow. got a master's in counseling and that was her thing was death and dying. So she wrote a whole paper about my experience of my fish dying and saying goodbye. And we flushed him down the toilet and I drew a picture of him before alive and happy and orange and after with black dots. And like, <laughs> so I really, I was kind of working through my grief process. My mom, that was like her, her work, you know, right. when I was, when I was three. And then, um, you know, I had had hamsters that died and I saw a squirrel in the backyard, a wild squirrel get eaten by maggots and I, my cats died. And you know what I mean? Like we, we, we brought a dog to the vet to get put down, but no humans right. until my dad died. Mm. And, and that's really on purpose in our culture. I've read, um, there's a great, if for whoever's listening, um, I'm going to share a few resources. And one of them is, um, a woman named Caitlin Dowdy, um, D O uh, now, now that I'm going to say it, I'm going to spell her name wrong. Let me see if I can grab one of her books. Um, let me grab a book. So I'm going to show it to you. Okay. Yeah, I'll put it down in the comments too. Dowdy. I'm guessing D O W D Y. In the middle of something. Okay. So this is um, one of her three books. It's called From Here to Eternity. Oh yeah. So she is a mortician in LA and she talks about in this particular book. So the, her first book is called smoke gets in your eyes. And that's all about her experience. Um, I have heard of both of these books and I thought they were movie titles. No, no. So she's great. She looks sort of mortician-y. She's got a great like black straight yeah. hair, you know? Um, and her latest book is called, um, will my cat eat my eyeballs and it's about it's all the questions that tiny mortals ask about death and it's all kids questions oh my gosh that they've asked like you know can grandma have a viking funeral um will my cat eat my eyeballs after i die <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah great just great questions that adults would never think to ask probably but right. um I they would think them but they wouldn't ask yeah so i'm bringing her up because um in one of her books i read about um Cause she's, you know, from the, from the, in the death industry, right. She's sh she's sharing all of her experiences with people. And she said that the fact that we don't see people dead is very on purpose in hospitals. They have special, like, I think of like my like magic kit as a kid where you had like the secret compartment for the, for the penny, you know, yeah. oh, they yeah, have yeah. A, a gurney that has a secret compartment underneath where they put the dead body. And it just looks like an empty gurney, like with a sheet, like, oh, this, this gurney is going, there's nobody on it, but the dead person is hidden underneath and the sheet is covering it. So nobody knows they're actually strolling a dead body past you. Whoa. That's why you never see anyone I'm dead. Think about that every time. <laughs> That's why you never see anyone dead in a hospital. And they also have a, a side to the back door where sure, they do all yeah. the... So we just, I mean, there, there are dead bodies on the highway all the time, but we never, we never know it. So it, it's just really, really hidden. So that it's, it's no fault of ours that we don't want to say the word death and die. Right, right. And it's really it's important that condition. we start shifting that. Um, so, so I just wanted to, to bring, bring up at the beginning two resources. One is Caitlin Dow Caitlin Doty, I think you say it Doty. Mm -hmm. I've actually met her at her last book opening, but she's her three books are fantastic. She also has a great YouTube channel where she mm -hmm. breaks down all kinds of things and she's dry and witty and funny and you know, whatever. Love Very it. easy to watch her YouTube channel. And the other thing I wanted to bring that I've purchased, which is really fun, is this is a death deck. Oh wow. And good? it's I met the two women that made this, and it's like a, a little game, a little kind of oh. game and you've got these little cards and you can pick one um and you can answer the question so hmm. it's it's a way to bring death into the conversation with friends and family so i just picked the one on the top and it says 
Have you ever been with someone while they were dying? Look at that. That's exactly oh, what we're talking about. Yes. And how did you feel? And then there's like an A, B, C. A, at peace. They seemed comfortable and ready to let go. B, disturbed. It's a visual I'd rather not have. C, unknown. I have not experienced someone dying and I'd mm. like to keep it that way. <laughs> and I'd like, to, I'd like to add D, I have not had that, that experience and I'd like to. And I'd like to, right. Right. which would be me. So, so what a perfect card that was right here on the top. Yes, yeah. So, so that brings me to my story that I, that I would have planned to tell you anyway, which was a, when I finally got to experience someone die, it was my dad's death and he died in um, 2012, November 15th. And uh, I'll just bring him like, he's, he's hanging out with me. Hey, hi, dad. My dad is always here um, yeah. right next to my computer. So this is Gil. And he really got me into this work, the, mm -hmm. the grief work. And um, it's been a slow, you know, almost decade to get me here, but um, I got to be with him when he died. Mm -hmm. And it was really a transformational experience. And I know every death is different, just like every birth is different. So not mm -hmm. everyone's gonna have my experience. And some people have had a really challenging time um, being with somebody who's died and it was not peaceful and it was not, mm -hmm didn't bring them peace. But for me, my dad um, had done three years of really deep healing work before he died. And I, and I, it, it's my belief that all of that work that he did really helped him to have um, a really peaceful letting go. Mm. And I experienced um, the most awe-inspiring wave of unconditional love that I've ever felt in my whole life after he died. Mm. Like, I, I mean, I, I took a photo and I, I don't know where the photo is living somewhere up in the cloud from 10 years ago. I hope it's still there. I don't know. But I was just like, oh my God, no one would believe. Like I took a shower at like two in the morning. He died at 10, 15 at night. And I was like, dad, I'm so happy. Like, I mean, I was just like, like ecstatic elation. I can't even, it was yeah. just wild. And I took a picture. My mom was there and, and one of my closest friends came that day and was there when he died and she played her guitar. Mm. She happened to come in for one night Wow. there and she had her guitar and she played songs and we sang and held his hand oh, and my mom yeah. read, read poetry. So we had like a little mini home funeral mm -hmm. and that was really, really powerful. And, um, and I am so grateful for the fact that we have hospice now and people are not dying alone yes. under fluorescent lights and that that when you have a terminal illness you are able to die at home with your family and there's not the rush right because that was one thing that was so healing and contributed to my healing um and my walk with grief um in in offering me a lot of ease and gentleness in the process of losing my dad was that we had time to sit there, to sing, to read poems, to hold my dad's hand. I, I mean, it was, it was wild. I got to watch like the color, like leave his fingers, like from the tips up. And it was just, it was awe inspiring. It wasn't creepy. It wasn't yeah. weird. It was just so, uh, I mean, I kind of want to say magical, right? It was yeah, just- well, I was going to yeah. say fascinating. It was, fa I mean, and I saw like his body go down and his spirit go up and like, mm. And I, I mean, the joy that I felt, I was like, you know, I don't know what kind of angels are out, but there, there must be an army of something amazing that right. came to get my dad. Cause I'm, I, I'm feeling them in the house. Right. So, um, so for death, like that, when death feels like that, what I, what I realized later when I took my home funeral, conscious dying home funeral course was like, wow, if. I wonder if my dad's family had gotten to experience that mm. if they would have had more peace. Like for example, one of my dad, like his youngest brother um, had a really hard time coming into our house for years. Yeah, That's where my dad died. And that was like his, my dad was his best friend. Mm -hmm. And because I felt so much love and so much peace, I was like, well, I wonder, um, if more people got to experience that, there would not be that fear of dying. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. And that's what I lost. I, I didn't, I wasn't afraid of death anymore. I mean, I'm still afraid of like the dentist and a lot of stuff, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not afraid of actually dying. Mm. And I think that when we, we are like, oh, we don't even want to say the word, you know, death or die. It's because it's just so foreign and we just want to pretend if we don't say grief and we don't say right. death, like maybe we could just pretend it's not there, but it's still there. We're just not we just right. don't have any awareness of it, which makes right. it scary. Right. The unknown, the scary, the, the, yeah, that's so interesting having, well, that separation between the experience, like, and how much we like hang on to and grip yeah. life, yeah. Uh, you know, for, for better, or for worse, right? Yeah. Like trying to prolong and extend as much as we can because of the fear um you know among other reasons too obviously we all want to live long happy lives if we can but (laughs) yeah and you know what a great point Renee because I feel like that is where um I've been talking a lot about unnecessary suffering right Mm -hmm. we have like loss that happens that is like we're all human we're all we're all going to be born. We're all going to die. Everything that we love, we're going to lose guaranteed. Right. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. Oh, there's only damn. one guarantee. It's a hundred percent guarantee that you're going to lose everything you love. Like what? Let's put that in perspective, right? Like a hundred percent chance of losing everything that you ever loved. Like, so, you know, might as that well. take a lot of people in a lot of different directions. Yeah. Sorry guys. Yeah. No. <laughs> Whew, dropping the stuff today, but, but when we, when we realize that, so what you just spoke to is the fact that life is always moving. It's a river and it's, it's eternity and it's never ending. So it's like, there is this never endingness. There is like this, this, um, part of our spirit. That's like, that never dies. Right. right. Whatever your spiritual religious belief is beyond that you know and how you imagine that but then there's like the physical world that's always changing right right? right. it's like we're born we like that we become compost we go back into the earth and then we feed the next thing and then there's a flower and then there's a tree right so when we when we believe and we really want it to stay the same and we're grabbing on to the sameness that's when we create our own suffering and when Mm. we can step into like oh you know what okay, everything is going to die. Like if I could like that, which is why nature is medicine. When we like really connect with nature, we, we get the medicine of understanding the truth that there's a year, there's a cycle, you know, like winter comes and winter goes and the day comes and the day goes. And, you know, when we get, we see the cycles happen and the rhythms happen, we're like, oh, okay. Everything changes. Everything's a circle. We can relax into that. It can be um, comforting to us. Mm-hmm as opposed to creating more suffering of wanting right. it to stay. The, the river will not stay the same. It's always different, you know, in every moment. So, Well, this is amazing. I want to make sure that we talk a little bit about what you're doing next week, because um, for anybody who is walking through, um, you know, a recent or not so recent grief, yeah. Um, and, you know, big life transitions and loss. Um, and you have something beautiful coming up. Yeah. Yeah. Once a season, I offer, um, I offer a multi-day virtual retreat to the public um, that's open to everybody. Anyone that's going through um, a death, a loss, a grief, no grief is too big or too small. <laughs> so really it's just, it's for everybody. Um, and it's, this one is called five steps to walk through grief with grace, mm. because I see grief really, it really is a walk. It's really something that we, that we move through. Mm. Um, and it, it can be painful and it can be sad and it can be heavy. There could be all kinds of emotions in it, but, um, but we can, there is grace in it and there is beauty in it. And we can find support and ease and gratitude and peace and a lot of love in it. Mm. So how do we open ourselves to the support that's all around us? How do we let go of what we're holding on to? How do we reach out and connect 
to other people moving through similar experience? How do we get guidance and mentorship in the journey so we don't have to do it, you know, all by ourselves, blindfolded in the dark? You know, we can we can shed some light on it. We can have some support. So so that's really what I'm what I'm doing. I'm offering a little bit of support um, every day for five days, and I think that's really helpful for people so that they can like get a little bit let it digest, get a little yeah. more, let it digest, get a little more. So you're welcome to come on all five days or if you can only come for a couple of days, that's fine. Um, and it's a free event. You can register on Eventbrite and I can give you the link or we can pop it in the chat for yeah, anyone who- Yeah, I will pop um, it in the chat. You know, if you're going through grief or you have like a, a family member or a friend who just had a loss, um, it would be great for them. And also a lot of my clients, it's not like a recent, they might have lost somebody in 2019 and right. now they're just, and they were in shock for a long time or yeah. they lost somebody, you know, 18 years ago. And it's like, they've been carrying around a bag of bricks and they've been um, forcing through the days and working 60 hour weeks and like pushing, right. pushing, pushing. And now this year they've had space to relax or now they're retired or now, oh my gosh, I'm now sitting with this grief mm -hmm. that I didn't know I had yeah all this time yeah. so it doesn't need to be like oh i just oh i didn't have a death this last year it could be there's right. something from your past that you haven't really been able to um yeah. to heal through right until right. now so well, and and new things come up too yes. even as years passed yes you know our perspectives changes you know life happens and you know things yeah. things come back up and through in a lot yeah. of ways yeah. So if any of that sounds like you, or, you know, you've got a friend or a relative that could use some support, um, you know, I welcome you to come. And if you, you, you might find some resonance, I'm going to offer a little tool um, every day, something, a little nugget that you can practice mm -hmm. at home, you know, something that might only take three minutes, but could really help you to move through what's heavy or move through what is feeling right. stuck so that you can get to the next thing. And that's really what we're, what we want to do is keep walking, keep mm. moving. And I do a lot of, that's my expertise is really in movement and, and body work. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a lot of pain and suffering that gets stuck in the body. And if we, if we're not moving it, then we're creating extra suffering for ourselves. So, so lightening up our load with breath with sound with movement is so powerful so that's those are things that i bring to the table to all of my clients and i'll offer a little taste of that um every day next week yeah, so that sounds beautiful I'd love to have anyone in your community join us we're gonna have a really and we're gonna really i'll say we're gonna have a fun time and we we do because <laughs> people are like isn't this really dark and you know sad and i don't want to hang out in a grief space all week or all year right. or all season but it's like when when people are open to leaning into it a little bit and they're open to to going a little bit deep then we also get access to the joy yeah and the gratitude and the pleasure and the unconditional love mm -hmm. you know all of that comes too mm -hmm. so it ends up being really fun joyful and loving and creative work yeah yeah as much as the i just keep thinking stuff. about the lightness that can come from moving through it yeah. Um, and all those pieces. That's, that's it, it really scary. is. I mean, that's what I did when my dad died. I took the whole year and I took grief by the hand and I made it a real conscious transformational healing journey for myself. And it was so powerful. And I know that, that it can be that it was that for me. And I see that happening for my clients and, you know, you're not only honoring what's lost, but you're honoring yourself in moving yeah. through it and, and shedding light on things. And then coming into what's the next chapter you know what's the next mm. way that because it's about living you know grieving right. is about living it's about right. letting go of what you loved and you were attached to and re-channeling your energy and your life force and your love to another mm. new place or receiving from more places so it's just mm. there's a lot of um there's a lot of lightness in it for sure i love it i yeah. love it well, thank you so much. Any final thoughts or words for our folks here in Midwest Elevation? Yeah, you know, just, um, I get a lot of people like, well, am I doing it right? Or am I in the right? Like a lot of like, um, you know, self doubt or wanting to like not feel this or I should be doing that or I should, right. 
we, we can just be so hard on ourselves. So, you know, I just want to honor everybody for exactly where they are. Mm. Just like being gentle with ourselves and going, you know what, this is where I, this is where I am. This is what's hard. And just bringing some gentle, like yeah. some gentleness to it and going, it's okay. Like wherever I am is okay. However I'm experiencing this is okay. Mm. I love so, that. I just love that just so keep much. bringing some gentleness in. Gentleness. Yeah. Which is also what I am doing for myself and telling everybody that our Tuesday conversations will be on pause for the next two weeks. Yes. <laughs> After a year of doing them weekly, we, I am going to take a two week pause on our live conversations, but I will certainly post some gems from uh, our year for you to watch next week. Uh, and the following Tuesday at 430 Central, we will be back after those two weeks of course that was a great segue thank you. yes and because you're going to take a vacation and be gentle yep. with yourself exactly Yay. Yay. and because you did that you can come back refreshed and give back to your community so it's so it's like in service to them for you to be gentle with you and take a yes. break yes oh what a Kudos great you. reframe there i love it